Polygon just released the ZK EVM upgrade. Is this a cutting edge technology that will transform Web3 and bring mass adoption or a solution to a problem that never actually existed in the first place? On the Crypto Mile this week, we are joined by Polygon co-founder Mihailo Jelek. Mihailo, welcome to the Crypto Mile. Thank you so much, Ryan. Happy to be here. Well, it's great to see you. I interviewed you in Paris, in ETH Paris last year. Things were quite good in the crypto uh, industry, but after FTX in November, things aren't the same. But we get, we're seeing things picking up a little bit. So I would ask you, why is this ZKAVM update? You know, why should we be getting excited about it? And why particularly is Ethereum's Vitalik Buterin very excited about it. That's a great and the, probably the most important question. The fact that Vitalik himself, as one of the most prominent people in the in the industry, uh, is very excited about this technology is pretty telling, right? So, so what's the big deal here? ZKVM stands for Zero Knowledge Ethereum Virtual Machine. Ethereum Virtual Machine is what we call execution environment. It is the implementation that executes all the transactions. So we are trying to establish this web free, right? Which is very exciting idea of having this global network work of value that is fully permissionless for anyone to use. It is global, internet native. And we have this really, really uh, great ideas how uh, this technology can change the world. And there's a lot of interest in, in crypto and Web3. The main challenge that we are facing as the industry is this need to scale. So Ethereum became basically the standard for uh, Web3 applications, right? But it cannot scale. It has very, very limited throughput. And now we are trying to establish this what we call web free stack in a similar manner how web 2 stack uh, has been established over the past few decades we're now establishing this web free stack and in that web free stack ethereum becomes the base layer and provides security ethereum is highly decentralized is the most secure programmable blockchain in the world and it's perfectly suited to become this security layer on top of it there are projects like Polygon, which will become this execution layer, right? And that's where the execution of all these user transactions will happen. And in that way, simply said, we are planning on scaling. For that setup to work, so to say, we need this type of execution environment like ZKVM. And ZKVM is the only type of execution environment that simultaneously offers free very important feature. One is scalability, so it can scale to support millions of transactions using this zero knowledge technology. It is a bleeding edge technology that you're very bullish about, and we were able to make it work with DVM. So it offers, first of all, security, second of all, scalability, and third, Ethereum or EVM compatibility. Why is the third one important? So you can have a solution, for example, that is secure and scalable, but if you completely change developer and user experience that we today have in crypto, you're going to have a very hard time with the, when it comes to adoption, right? So ZKVM has been considered the holy grail uh, of blockchain infrastructure and scaling because it's a technology that offers all these three things together. So now we can scale to high, high uh, levels of, of throughput without sacrificing security in any way and without changing developer and end user experience. So that's that kind of trifecta that you were able to deliver and we are able to deliver it basically two years before uh, it was expected. That's very exciting. So Mihilo, are we saying that the blockchain trilemma about solving decentralization, scaling and security has been solved by the ZK EVM upgrade? I would say it's obvious that it's solved now, right? Because we have no fundamental challenges now. The throughput is not an issue anymore. It's not an obstacle. And we go one step beyond that, I would say. As I mentioned, you can solve this trilemma, but on top of it, we manage to preserve developer and user experience. So everything that developers are used to, the Solidity is the most popular language in, in Web3. They are existing tools and users are interacting with these networks using wallets, popular wallets like MetaMask. None of these things are changing. Developers are simply redeploying their existing applications from Ethereum on ZKVM and they simply work. And the ZK part, that's zero knowledge. So does what does that actually mean? Just for the complete lay person, the, the, the man on the street who wants to use Polygon or use Ethereum, why should zero knowledge proofs matter to him? They should matter because this technology enables all these things. Because of ZK proofs and their properties, we are able to take, let's say, 1 million transactions aggregate them into one single ZK proof, one very small proof that gets verified on Ethereum. 
and you were able now to process all these transactions without sacrificing security. So security is still on the highest level confirmed by Ethereum itself. So as an average person, you now on Ethereum, if you want to transact on Ethereum, you will pay per transaction from $1 to maybe $10, depending on how complex your transaction is and what's the current demand and whatnot. And that's an acceptable, right? For example, in, for people in developing countries or people who are doing transactions that are smaller in value, this is unacceptable. With Polygon now and ZKVM, you can do all these same transactions with the same level of security, but you will pay a cent for them or a fraction of cent or depending. This all is enabled by ZK proofs. So now that ZK AVM is basically the upgrade is out there, Ethereum is the base layer, Polygon's layer two on top of that. Both chains have like a very close relationship, but could you see a possibility down the line because Polygon is now cheaper and faster, it may overtake Ethereum in terms of economic activity. I would say it's certainly going to take over Ethereum. It already took over with POS chain that we have one of our implementations in, in Polygon that already has higher level of transactional activity than Ethereum, which is fine. That is Ethereum and Polygon as a layer two have this symbiotic relationship where Ethereum is going to serve as this security layer. The roadmap that Vitalik as the founder and front face of Ethereum communicated recently, the intention of Ethereum is not to cost these end user transactions. Ethereum will become this security layer that will just verify uh, activity from Polygon, for example, as the as the layer two, right? So it is kind of a, a mutually beneficial relationship in which it is already kind of agreed that Polygon will be the one hosting this end user activity. That's just how things will work. So. That relationship is very symbiotic, I would say. And that is why possibly that Vitalik has got involved with this upgrade with the ZK AVM. Vitalik will be our guest and he will do the first symbolic transaction on the ZK AVM mainnet itself, which again speaks to that how important this technology is and how good of a and symbiotic relationship Polygon as layer two and Ethereum as layer one. That's a great endorsement, isn't it, for Polygon? But let's actually look at the end user experience, not just for like the man in the street, or the woman on the street. Let's look at businesses. Now, last year or the year before, was it that Polygon partnered with Disney? You know, so how is this going to help enterprise and businesses? How is the ZK EVM upgrade going to help them? It equally helps by enabling this scale without sacrificing security and equally, equally helps web free native projects as well as big companies that have recently started using Polygon. So uh, for Disney or, or Starbucks that has their loyalty program, for example, on, on uh, Polygon, they can now achieve fraction of a cent transaction costs for the users. They're able to scale their loyalty program now to orders of magnitude, more users, etc. The throughput is higher, the fees are lower, so all the existing use cases now become just more uh, viable and easier to implement and easier to scale. All these different scenarios that we're talking about, are they around the corner or are they actually happening right now? They're definitely happening right now and we are seeing uh, in the past months, especially in the past 12 months actually, a number of big corporations, companies, enterprises have started using Polygon. For example, Reddit, which is one of the biggest, most popular social networks, introduced their uh, uh, collectible avatars program on, on Polygon, and it has been a huge success. Millions of people were onboarded to Polygon and to Web3 with, in a matter of a couple of weeks. Starbucks, as I said, is introducing their loyalty program. Instagram has uh, started experimenting with the, again, creator economy and NFTs. Uh, on Polygon. So we're seeing definitely this this very clear signs of mainstream adoption. A number of big popular games is now on Polygon with their game assets, in-game assets. And we're really seeing in multiple industries from fashion industry to automotive industry with brands like Mercedes, Dolce Gabbana from the fashion industry and really many others are already on Polygon and exploring multitude of use cases. We're seeing very clear signs of of mass and mainstream adoption or your Polygon. So Polygon, you have your cryptocurrency called Matic and that kind of bars the transactions that happen on Polygon. Why should I go then purchase Matic to use in Polygon? Why not use Ether? Matic is a token that is used to perform useful work in the, in the Polygon ecosystem. So uh, owners of the token are able to become what we call validators in, in Polygon ecosystem. And you basically help validate and process user transaction. By doing that useful work, you generate basically revenue streams for yourselves, which comes from 
two, two, two major sources. One is actual token rewards, what we call. So whenever you perform this useful work, you are rewarded with additional small amount of Matic continuously as you perform this work. On top of that, you get the right to collect transaction fees that are paid within those networks that you're validating. So it's basically a, a productive asset. It, it shouldn't be looked as, at as an investment. It's an asset that you purchase to perform useful work in the network and you can create revenue uh, or yield for yourself by performing that useful work and securing the network. Okay, so it incentivizes the security of the network and people to validate it and it makes it decentralized and very secure. Yes. Now, if we look at analysts are actually now su suggesting that Matic, the price of Matic might appreciate with this upgrade. Can you give us any reason why you think that would be? I cannot comment on, on uh, token prices. What really matters uh, for us is that we see very, very high level of interest in ZKVM. We really believe it's a, a bleeding edge transformative technology and majority of the industry agrees. We only care about adoption, we believe. And the price of the token matters because the higher the price, the more secure the system is. And there is, of course, this demand and, and the supply. These things will just play out on themselves. So talking about mass adoption, how far away is Polygon from mass adoption? I think we're seeing clear signs, basically, of, as I said, mass and mainstream adoption with all these major brands from really all industries, like from Salesforce to Starbucks to the household names like Instagram, Reddit, many traditional industries uh, from NFL, Adidas, uh, Dolce Gabbana, Mercedes, as I mentioned, this is really so many mainstream brands are already on Polygon. Polygon has become known for great work on, when it comes to adoption and onboarding people to, to Web3. Now we are coupling that with this really bleeding edge technology that no one else in the industry has been able to deliver. And we believe these two things combined will be the key to further uh, ignite mass adoption. Now, just lastly, it's quite notable that uh, the Belgian digital minister was discussing the EU developing its own smart contract blockchain. And my thought there was, why would the EU start from scratch whenever there is already existing blockchains like say Ethereum or Polygon as a layer two? What argument would you have to the EU to say, actually, we you should really be considering Polygon layer two instead of building this from scratch. I think it's very, very clear that uh, these institutions or organizations and governance should be looking into existing technology because it's proven, it's already performant, it's battle tested, right? So it really makes no sense to, to create everything from scratch. That being said, with Polygon stack, it is possible for any organization to have their, so to say, application or use case specific chain which still coexists in the wider Polygon ecosystem, right? So you can have your own, to put it simply, your own layer two, which is still interconnected with the rest of the ecosystem, but you still have a dedicated chain, basically, for your use case or your community. So basically, they can have really the best of both worlds by utilizing Polygon. Right, then it would be interoperable with other chains? Yes, exactly. This launch, I think, is going to be uh, quite notable. I really believe so, and especially I'm really happy that this is happening now in this exact moment where we have a little bit of uncertainty, maybe from the regulatory side, from the US and concerns about banks. Overall, uh, right, the atmosphere might be a little bit gloomy. Now is a very good moment to make people excited about crypto again. AI has been a bleeding edge technology for a while, but recently, since ChatGPT has been launched, people are very excited about AI again. We believe ZKVM can be that type of technology that will really open up new use cases and make people very excited about crypto again. Well, Michelo, lovely to have you on the Crypto Mile and thanks for coming on. Thank you, Ryan. Always a pleasure.